The Brew World Order is an official program of the BrewTubers Online Brewers Club Network, featuring the latest news, updates, and interviews from the BrewTubers community. So sit back, relax, and crack open that freshly made home brew and join us as we get to know the BrewTubers from your favorite online brewers club. And now your host, Leo J. Bailey. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode number 7 of the Brew World Order, an official program of the BrewTubers Online Brewers Club. You can find us at uh, www.brewtubers.com. Um, yeah, this is episode number 7. I'll make this very brief. This is part 2 of the interview with Mr. Nate Pico. We were drinking beers and running our mouth and things got away from us and what are you going to do? So I will make this brief. We will get into part two and then I will come back and I have a bit of an announcement about the future of things and see what we can do about that. Happens to be Happy Homebrew Wednesday. This is an American wheat that I brewed a while back. It's on tap. Cheers. It's a good, good enough excuse to drink a beer. Coming up next, check out Nate, me, talking things not always beer. See you on the other side. Later. The Brew World Order would like to thank the sponsors of the Brew Tubers Online Brewers Club, such as Imperial Yeast, Five Star Chemicals, Beer and Wine Hobby, and Brewing America. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to episode now seven of the Brew World Order. We are back with Mr. Nate Pico from Under the Table Brewing. This has been a long two weeks. I apologize. For us, it's only been mere minutes, and we are still just trucking along in this conversation. And I just got to get right to it. There's a couple of things about Nate. There's some brew tubers in this in this club that I really dig and guys that I just kind of connected with when I first kind of met them online. And Nate was one of those guys when we found out that we are fellow musicians. And that was the big trigger. And, you know, I've been playing since I was 17 years old. We piss everybody off when we do, you know, video clips and stuff on, on Discord. They have their sports channel. We, we have our music. We should request a, a specific music channel. We should. You we know? should. <laughs> Get those sports ballers. <laughs> their own stuff. Because really, I'm, no offense, I am getting so sick of hearing about the Bills and the Patriots. For Christ's sake, people, enough already. <laughs> Seriously, man. It's, I'm just ready to take a nap, go to sleep, check out. Oh go you know watch another rerun of family guy for the 50th time before yeah. i gotta pay attention to that you know with with that it's sad to, to learn about our, our buddy dusty hill oh um, god his passing last last week give you guys Man. some time relevance there you 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 and i have ah. a tendency to have the same kind of interest in certain styles and certain styles of music that we have mm -hmm. played i couldn't begin to tell you how many times i've played ZZ Top heard it, heard it on the X. I used to sing Tush in yeah. another band that he. I mean, that was his one of his signature songs. That was Dusty's songs. songs, man. Yeah, yeah. one of his songs. It just it kills me because it was so sudden, it was so unexpected, mm -hmm. and the outpouring of the community has been pretty epic, man. Yeah. I'm really tickled that there really are that many people that still paid attention. To ZZ Top, yep. You're talking a band that 50 plus years, man. Yeah, same power trio, same members, original members For the whole way, all that time. Always, always doing it their own way. Yeah, you know, beautiful, beautiful stuff, um, and and visionary, and also just um, they they are like the OG. I mean, they're like that that country rock blues thing that. They, yes, they tailored that and that was that yes. was their baby yeah you know you know you know what their name was before it was easy top I, there's a documentary that i seem to have learned but it it passes by me right now 
Well, they had a couple, but the main, the, the, the one that I guess was more well known is the uh, moving sidewalks. Yes. That's yeah. crazy. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, so we we like to we like to play music, and uh, we also like to listen to music. And we do. Uh, I mean, we're talking. I mean, because yeah. one of my biggest influences myself, and in you're talking ZZ Top, open for Hendrix. Mm-hmm. That gives you, the, you there's credibility there. They've been around that long that they performed yeah. with Hendrix on the same damn stage. So that was my early influence of stuff, man. I grew up on that stuff and just absolutely ate ate it up ate it up still do yeah if anyone wants to check out some some good stuff rio grande mud is is one of the classic one of the best first albums uh yes indeed it wasn't their first album because zz top's first album was zz top's first album right um uh i think i think that was their second album if i'm not mistaken but uh rio grande mud yeah 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 I think it was a second. Anyway, fantastic. Great record. Go get it. Listen to it. Turn it way up. Absolutely, man. So uh, you, yes, sir. as a musician, you are playing again. Mm-hmm. We both are. Actually, I took a short hiatus for a little bit, and I'm playing again. But you've been playing again. You've hooked up with some people now that you're down in Georgia way. Yes, sir. Yep. And we the were a five-piece, and we're kind of back. We're down to a four-piece now. Um one uh, guitarist kind of has some life stuff going on and right. needs to recalibrate, but uh, but we're, we've got a strong strong group of the four of us, and uh, we're going to see if we can make it without bringing on another musician. Okay. And if we need to, we will. But um, yeah, it's going great. Uh, we've been together now eight months, going on eight months. So um, and we've already played a gig, and we're we've got another gig lined up for an Oktoberfest um, at the mm-hmm. same brewery that we played in June. Uh, that's a big event for them. There's usually 500 to 750 people there yeah. that come through the day and hang out, something like that. I, I don't know the exact number, but it's um, it's a good turnout. Um, they call it Hogtoberfest because they, they do a pig roast. And oh, it's, nice. Um, yeah, it's, and usually the weather is fantastic here at that time of year, so it's a yep. great time to be outside in Georgia. Yeah. So, really we've, got the, to we've got two lined up. We've got September 11th, which of all days, that, that's going to mm-hmm. be a hard one. Um, but it's a big festival. We're looking at anywhere. They, they gather at this place. We went there today, as a matter of fact. It's in Winchester, cool. Virginia. And we went there today to hang out and watch a couple bands, but they average anywhere from five to 900 people rolling through there. So we are stoked for that and then we've got my tiny little brewery two miles down the road we're going to do that in october and that's kind of a free gig for us we don't even get paid we just go in there and just have fun it's friends yeah we just do our thing yeah so there's another brewery uh local that i i just talked to um that they did a homebrew competition there and uh my beer took second place Dropkick Nate actually took second place. Nice. And um, they really dug it. They also like my New England that I put in. Um, but it it is also scored the top five. Um, I think it was like 25 entries. It wasn't a big, big count. But um right. from mentioning it that one time, I got an email saying, Hey, we want to get your band in here. So it was like, that's cool. So Absolutely. that's another tentative gig coming up. Yeah. So that was kind it's of, cool. I, I think Swover was kind of similar to that. I was going down there and Dave has taught me a few things about brewing. He's a decent, decent dude. And then they started expanding outside and he goes, aren't you a musician? I went, Why? Yes. Yes, yes I, I am. am. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how that came about as well. Awesome. They are also the same brewery now. Yeah, I don't, it's not happening. I don't think it's going to happen. But a while back I was telling everybody I was super stoked about my local brewery was going to brew one of my beers. I don't think it's ever going to happen. It got shelved for more important things. So I got stoked about it. I shouldn't have got a little excited. Have you had a chance to do anything of that nature yet? Have you had a chance to go in and brew at a, even on on a local level, have you had a chance to go in and brew something a little bit bigger than just in your own system? Sure. Yeah. Um, So it's the, the local club here. Um, it was started by the guys that run uh, Abide Brewing, which is oh, hard to sweet. see. But yeah, yeah, these guys. Um, 
there in Noonan, Georgia. Um, they were really okay. one of the first small craft breweries here. So they started the homebrew club before they started the brewery. Well, they are super supportive of, of our club. And um, once or twice a year, we actually go in and do collaborative uh, oh, club nice. brew days. And then a work share. So everyone takes work home. And then the brewery keeps the balance of the work from whatever volume we made. And right. then they put a special tap on in the tap room. You know, basically, brew tubers, homebrew club, blah, blah, blah. Nice. Whatever it is. So um, when I started with the club, the first beer we did was Dropkick Mate. Um, so everybody, we all brewed. Well, we all brewed together. We all had the same work. And then um, that was... 105 gallons or so um everybody took work home fermented it with different yeasts and then bit, you know different dry hops or whatever they wanted right. to do and then we did um and then they had some that they they kept on they fermented dropkick mate with a hefeweizen yeast and uh it, <laughs> it didn't turn out very good i don't, oh, no. think it made it to the, I don't even think it made it to the tap um, oh, no. <laughs> that's so that's that one um, we also have done, uh -huh. uh, we did my black IPA and we did love that style. We did something else too, but we've also, we've moved up from their, their original brew house to the six barrel brew house. So the last couple times we brewed over there, we've brewed six, you know, basically six barrel batches. And then they have quite a few kegs that they can fill and no kidding. So the black IPA was a big hit there. That was uh, basically my 2014 SJ4 winning recipe. Um, that's one of those hydrometers up there. Like yes, Dennis. indeed. That's, that's the original the SJ4 handmade, um, handcrafted stand for it. And uh, so that was that. That was pretty cool. Uh, getting to brew it on the big system and seeing how everything scales from yeah. to you know, and the changes that we had to make for you know swapping out grains or, you know, changing the hops because if you scale it up the same, it's like, okay, that's $400 worth of hops where we can't really swing it this month, you know? Wow. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Crazy. I but, get it. Um, but on man, a smaller it's, scale, like we so do, yes. it's not that big a deal, but I can see it getting right. pricey when you're a brewer yeah. of that nature. Especially when you do the, you know, those Gucci hops like Galaxy and, and Amarillo. And, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yep. So, so yes, I have. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you definitely have. Yeah. All right, kids, we're going to take a brief break. We're going to get into one of our sponsors and we're going to come back and we're going to wrap things up of this horribly, horrendously long two part episode <laughs> with me and Nate talking about everything under the sun. You, you guys, and we're going to come it. back. Stay I do want to pick, I want to, <laughs> I want to pick your brain because I do have a question. Actually, I have a second question later tonight, but the big question that I do like to ask, and I don't think I've asked anybody recently, but I will ask when we come back from break is, hold your thoughts, what is not your, and besides your drop kick, Nate, what is the best beer that you have brewed so far in your career? And with that, we will be right back. The BrewTubers online store has everything you need for your brewing apparel and gift idea needs with a growing selection of colors and sizes for hoodies, t-shirts, and caps. Stickers and magnets? Got them. Can holders and coffee mugs? We've got those too. Be the boss of your neighborhood and the envy of brewers everywhere when you flash that beautiful BrewTubers logo at your next local brewing competition. Want everyone to know you're a part of the brew world order? Strike a Superman pose with that BWO logo on your chest and make them all take notice. And if you haven't already, get over to our website at www.brewtubers.com and become a member. Then, just mosey yourself over to that BrewTuber store tab, click on it, and open the door to show the world you are a proud BrewTuber. Brew, record, post, repeat. All right, there we go. Hey, welcome back, kids. I hope you. What in the world are you doing? <laughs> I was taking a selfie of the selfie. Of the, the the show is now starting to become 
derailed. Um, this is not a home brew. Not at all. This is a beer that um, Matt sent you. No, no. This is uh this is from Sycamore Brewing. I don't even know where the hell they're from. I picked it up today. Hold on, Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah, that's from that's from Matt. Oh no, can you get those beers? Matt sent me a Sycamore beer. I'm pretty Did sure it? Mountain Mountain Candy. Yeah, Mountain I've had, Candy. I've had that. That's what I was drinking a little bit earlier, other than my own. So, all right, brother, I have put the question to you. Yep. I thought what about it. Is the fate, and I should maybe say best. I mean, you know, let me requalify it as either best or your favorite beer that you have brewed yourself. Okay. So my it's actually a bit of both. Um, the beer that I was most happy with out of everything I've brewed was also probably one of the more challenging beers that I've ever made. But the right. brew day went perfectly. And it was a beer that I think I've I think I spent more time researching that recipe and how I wanted to put that together than anything else I've made. Really? So let's put it that way. Here and it, it was a and it was a triple decocted um black Czech Pilsner. Or dark, Czech, Czech dark Pilsner. Um, so it's kind of like a black lager, but, you know, it's like a, a Schwarz, Schwarz, beer, Schwarz beer, but not a Schwarz beer. Um, I was given probably about 15, <clears throat> 15 or 20 pounds of some floor malted dark Bohemian uh, Pilsner malt. Okay. And it's a wireman. Uh, yep. Quite nice stuff. And uh, so I was like, what am I going to do with this? Right. So then I started researching and that's where I kind of based it. Like, okay, I've never heard of this style. Um, never tasted it, but everyone right. that was discussing it on the on, online forums and stuff were just raving about it. So right. I can't, I can't remember the exact, uh, I think it was like Pivo pills or something like that. Um, which is a commercial available uh, beer in, in Czechoslovakia. Right. But, or Czech Republic, sorry. Um, so, anyway, I built this recipe up, ordered the grains, uh, ordered a pound of Saz hops, and um, I can't remember the exact yeasts. I might have just used 3470 because that's what I had, but I did a triple, triple decoction, which is scooping out the mash and then bringing it up to a boil. So, you've got grains and you're boiling. A mash. So you've got a portion of the mash you pull out and put it into a kettle and boil that separate chunk of the mash, then put it back in, and then that gives you your step, your temperature steps for your mash. Um Goodness so it was yeah, it was a lot of balancing and time, and I didn't have any distractions. So the brew day just went perfectly, start to finish. Um, I did I just went on a gamble there and I did a full um like a 12-gallon batch of that. Right. And it it turned out amazing. And in fact, and I made that in May of 2020, thereabouts, maybe April. Okay. I still have some of that beer on tap at a friend's house. Do you really? That's yeah. nuts, dude. He's, he went through a divorce last year, put it on tap, and then he went through this divorce, and it was a, just a whole nightmare, and his work's been crazy. So he's just got this, he's got a keg, kegerator in his basement. My beer is sitting there on tap, and nobody has touched it i yeah every time i, I, I can't there, imagine letting that sit there i would have gone through that well yeah. by now well that was part of it and then i put another i think i had four gallons on here and four gallons at another friend's house that four gallons went really fast because everyone realized how good it was good mine went lord really dude. four and a half percent just such an easy drinker yep. dark beer that was like quenching and delicious in the summer months um I don't know why I haven't brewed that beer again because it was like I said that is that is my best beer I've That's ever made. That's crazy, yeah. dude. That sounds absolutely amazing, but very technical as well. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, it's just paying attention and knowing when to to do those steps and everything. And um, I can't. I think I was still using uh, Beersmith at the time. Okay, and Beersmith actually kind of st stepped me through it um, pretty pretty straightforward. So there wasn't a lot of mystery. Are you using uh, Brewfather now? Yeah, pretty much exclusively. Yep. 
I, I, I have done a little bit of development in, in Beersmith still uh, recently, but uh, but no, it's pretty much all, all blue powder. Yeah, I found that that works really best for me right now. I'm going to come in here without getting into detail. I'm totally rebuilding everything down here. And I'm going to have, I've got an extra laptop that I'm going to have down here just strictly for, you know, brew days and stuff. Yep. The one that I interview here now is one that I actually have to bring from downstairs. So uh, hopefully I'll put an end to that business. Well, look, folks, we are about to wrap up a phenomenal two-part section. I hope everyone else enjoys this as much as I have. But now the final big question, the most important question, actually, of all of this at the end of our interviews, because it's kind of an introductory, but we got to know Nate a little bit more than just a hello kind of thing, because it <laughs> yeah. was more for me to chat with Nate than it probably was for you, because we have so much in common. The big question is, who is my next victim? Uh-oh. You know I'm not going to make it easy for you. Oh, God. Oh, come on. What are you going to do to me? <laughs> this ought to be I, interesting. Here I, choose Al I choose Alex Rock. Rock on beer. Oh, dear God, man. You're going to be drinking oh, in the morning. How in the hell are we going to schedule that? For hey, anyone same... that is not familiar yeah. with Alex, Alex, Alex raised and grew up in the Michigan beautiful territory that it is and currently lives in Denmark. That's a time zone issue. Yeah. Oh, you're killing me, dude. Well, he and I have done brew days before, so it's not a, it's yeah. It and he's a highly entertaining dude, man. I think chatting with him is going to be a freaking hoot. You're gonna you're gonna have a great time, and I'm gonna have a blast watching it. So, oh god, it's gonna be ridiculous. I can see that one coming. Yeah. Well, look, we're gonna let you go, brother. I yep. got things hey, to do myself. You guys can it catch has me on been, all the all the uh, Instagram and the YouTube's and stuff. I will uh, definitely oh, uh, reach Twitter. out. I'm gonna yeah. make sure that I don't know if you're on Twitter and, and I am and, and, under Table and, Brew. I will reach out to you for all of those appropriate okay. links yeah. and I'll make sure Cutting that you off. are under everything under the comments. And please people, if you don't subscribe to under the table brewing, you should. Yes, you should check out Nate's stuff. Go back and watch the old stuff that he did when he didn't have the Epic beard. They're just as entertaining as what he does now. And uh, look, subscribe, check out everything. Brew tubers. Check out our sponsors, everybody that you've seen in the past two weeks. And um, happy homebrew, people. Cheers, brother. Thank you so Cheers. much for being a part of this. Thanks, Leo. It was a pleasure, man. And uh, homebrew up. Later. Cheers. Imperial Yeast was founded on the ideal that if you are going to do something, do it right. Through many years of experience in liquid yeast and craft brewing, they understand that home brewers and pros alike need access to better yeast, service, and support. Their staff has decades invested in liquid yeast and professional brewing alongside countless afternoons and evenings spent home brewing. Imperial Yeast. Pitch right. Hey, welcome back, folks. That was our interview with Mr. Nate Pico. Thank you, Nate, very much. I greatly appreciate having you on the show. You were absolutely wonderful. It, uh, you know, tons of fun. And, of course, as you can tell from the uh, choice that Nate made, I have already, because I'm recording this, obviously, after that interview was done, I've already been out in uh, touch with Alex from Rock On Beer. We will somehow try to get our, our schedules together in order to do that and make that happen. Coming up. We got some things to talk about before the end of the year. Um, I believe, and I don't want anybody to take this wrong, I believe that there is someone out in the BrewTubers community, a member of this club, that has the wherewithal, the technology, and I believe the ambition to take this show to the next level, to be able to take whatever it was that I started 
to change it up, make it better. If you have the technology, if you have, think you have the talent much more than I do, um, hey, reach out. Reach out to the BrewTubers community, an officer of the club, somebody on Discord. You can reach out to me. Um, hit hit us up. I, I This is something that I started because I thought it would be a really great idea to help spread the word of BrewTubers. You guys have been awesome to me, but I would like to wrap my involvement up in this show at the end of the year. I believe that I am going to commit to doing an interview for September, October, November, and December. I am definitely willing to do that, and I would desperately love to have somebody that had already was willing to pick up that mantle and continue this starting January of 2022. Um, just something I feel that can be done better. I think somebody that has the wherewithal, the talent, and the equipment, and the time, maybe, would be a good way to put it. And let's take this show to a, a whole new level. Something that I think would help spread word to advertisers, more potential members, anything of that nature. Something that is going to make it a cleaner, more polished, not so random type of thing that I do. Because I am who I am and that you can give me suggestions all day long but this is all it's ever going to be. No apologies. So, we will see you next month. We have our meeting um, for the first, it's going to be whatever that is, the first Friday of September coming up. And I will, again, if nobody has already caught on by then, I will definitely uh, have a word with the boys during a meeting about that. And uh, let's see if we can't find somebody that would uh, be willing to do this. And in the meantime, I still got work to do. I got to do some work with Alex and then whoever Alex picks for October and then November and then December and so on. Well, December would be it. So, cheers people. Let's get this done. And um, happy Homebrew Wednesday again. See y'all next month. Well, yeah, next month, a couple weeks from now. Later folks. Brew World Order. Later. <laughs>